Good. good. Um, hello everyone, and it's not a Friday stream for for once. Um, it's slightly later than usual, but uh, we are coming up with midsummer uh, tomorrow and during the weekend, so I'll be a bit preoccupied with that. But uh, for today and tonight, we have with us our CEO John. Been a while, hey guys. Uh, been a while since you were on stream, but I managed to poach you in here now that we're going to be talking about some of the more probably a little bit more kind of controversial thing I, I don't really want to use the term but it's gonna hopefully incite some interesting discussions um as well as our general progress on 10.3 and the new auth server and a whole bunch of other fixes changes improvements on our path towards release of this um yeah Hope everyone's stoked because I am kind of eager to get things get things going and get this update out but we're not entirely there yet um, so for if we start with what has been a problem with 10.2 that showed up uh, viciously um, auth service and there's been some some code some code snippet discoveries regarding potential offline stuff do you want to talk about that uh, sure, yeah. So with Eco 10.3, we are going to make the game uh, playable offline or without, you know, if Steam servers go down or if Strange Loop servers go down, uh, the game will be fully playable. Um, and that's something that bothered some of our players because they don't like that they can't play with these DRMs up. Uh, but this allows people to play offline. You know, if our servers go down, it's not going to block you. Uh, so just a nice, nice little addition to uh you know kind of the fundamentals of how you connect yeah and hopefully our new auth server is also going to be a bit more rigorous there's been a lot of old code laying around with the old one and a full full new rebuild basically yeah we're calling it strange cloud so we have uh kind of a lot of our new features are going in there uh, we're going to start recording data for worlds so uh, previously, we weren't doing that, but now worlds will have a history in there. You know, we'll track how many hours are being played on these worlds, and we can start to do interesting things with that, um, with unlocking stuff or changing stuff when uh, when they have more hours um, to like connecting servers together. So, kind of the very beginnings of this idea of like having a network of worlds that can connect to each other. Uh, so our strange cloud is supporting that, as well as uh, our new uh, premium items that we're we're going to be talking about too. Yeah, we we have some, we, we have some some new fancy things going on um, that we want to reveal today. We we also have some sneak peek into the new crafting UI that comes with it. As there had we had some preconditions for making this work and and make it presentable and usable in game. Um, and I think we can just kind of kind of take it away into uh, maybe since we're on the topic on auth maybe we should just transition into um, into my screen here um, with the new auth server and an auth system in general um, you are gonna need to log in from a server management perspective or a server owner perspective because the server is gonna be linked to an account because of those statistics and also related um, IP things. So when you first start up your server now, uh, do I want to do that now? Is it going to go absolutely crazy on me? <laughs> it should work. Test it live. Should work. You'll have yes, to restart. It, yeah, it wants me to restart. Um, so when you first start up the server, it's going to prompt you to log in with your with your slg username and password at the moment we were talking about switching that out to somehow use like a token registry from the website instead um but at at the moment right now if you try to get in um it'll prompt you with a user password thing but it's a bit under revision still and as with all of the things that we're showing here everything's gonna work in progress it's not the final thing um things may change back and forth up and down as always with development um so take things with a little mm. bit of a grain of salt yeah the basic idea is that now we'll have your user accounts will be associated to worlds so every world will have 
an eco user account, which might just be your Steam account. You don't, you don't, you won't have to set up a Strange Loop account. Um, but uh, either way, you'll have an account tied to the world, so that just goes into the fact that they're, you know, tracking these worlds as more persistent objects in, in the eco universe, basically. Yeah. So we do this. Get some, get some terrain going. Get a bit of a playground. Um, so with this, IPs, marketplace, and some of the other things that people have been seeing on uh, in the code stream. Um, do you want to mention it, or should I mention it? Yeah, let's uh, let's unveil it. Do you want to just open the the eco store or marketplace? Yeah, probably. So when you hop in on a server, and this is something that you can only do on a world, you're not going to be able to access it in offline mode. You're not going to be able to access it through um, just in the main menu because references are tied to the world back and forth. So you have a new, a new interaction here, which is an eco store. And when you first open it, um, you get presented with the, uh, some general new information and things happening. Yeah, this is kind of a good place. I can kind of give the rundown of what we're we're thinking here. Yeah, go um, for it. Uh, so can you close that dialogue box in the middle there? So basically, we've been thinking of uh, our our business model, our core business model, and what it incentivizes us to work on. You know, so right now we have just a single purchase, twenty nine ninety nine on Steam. And once you, you buy the game, there's nothing more to spend, which just results in the, the fact that the only economically meaningful player activity is when they buy the game. But with Eco, lots of our players are playing hundreds of hours, sometimes thousands of hours, actually quite often thousands of hours. And we're not incentivized financially to support those players, but those are some of our biggest players and the ones we really want to support. So that's kind of the guiding uh, idea behind this, uh, this idea that we want to have ways that long-term players can still uh, <laughs> contribute to ECO and, uh, you know, get some new value in there, give them things that are really interesting without corrupting the game. So what we're going to be selling is blueprints for different objects. So you can buy blueprints to do variants on certain objects. So for example, uh, a canoe, if you have the Viking canoe blueprint that you buy in the eco marketplace, then you can make it look different. Uh, but it'll be functionally identical to the canoe. So that's kind of our, our guiding design principle is that these are only cosmetics. And it's just ways to have cooler looking stuff in the game. And, you know, give those long-term players something to, uh, you know, add to their experience in the game as well as supporting eco. So we've got a, a bunch of different variants set up for all, all kinds of different objects in the game, uh, including these uh, these signs that are very tied to professions, like see, you see a tailoring sign there. Uh, so lots of cool ways to kind of express your identity and personality in the game, as well as have these like really beautiful things like a fish pond or like a fancy chest, um, <clears throat> as well as we'll have uh, avatar upgrades, clothes, and things like that as well. So lots of different cosmetic options. And then down below, you see this... Uh, approach we're taking where we want to share what's spent on the on in this store with the eco community so every time a purchase is made with these eco credits we will divide it up among a variety of par parties everyone who's kind of providing value to uh the the chain that is eco so the person hosting the server will get a percentage yet but we want to include Ooh, you're you're warping out a little bit. Did we just lose John? Maybe I'm still here. Or you still here? Founds or federation? Yeah, they can get a uh, percentage. Is it working? Yeah, 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 it's working again. That was weird. Where is it? Is video having a fritz here? I can I can sort of hear you, but it was warping in and out. But 
seems to be back. I think it cut out. Can you hear me now? Yep. Okay. I'm not sure what happened there. Uh, where the, the uh, where did I get cut off? Um, allocation, distribution, and kind of mm -hmm. where we're going with it. Yeah, so we give a percent to everyone who's supporting the, the eco value chain, basically. So the world host, modders who've created mods will get one, get a percentage. Streamers who are supporting the streamer will get a percentage. Uh, actually, settlements will eventually get a percentage. You know, long running countries and towns will be able to kind of share in that. And then we want to include a portion to support the actual earth, you know, as part of the value chain of eco. Everything is connected to that. Uh, so we've picked out a great charity called uh, the Ocean Cleanup, and we want to give five percent of all of the eco credit spend to the uh, to this charity. So the idea with this is that you know we're one, on one hand we're changing the business model a bit so that we have a way for long term players to support us, and we also want to connect that to everyone else who adds value to eco, all the eco citizens who are hosting worlds, who are making mods. You know, who are running these like settlements in the game, who are streaming the game, they those people add a ton of value to the <clears throat> economy of eco, and you know, this this gives a way to reward them. So eco credits are credits you buy with real money, and then you're able to spend them uh, on these different items, and eventually we'll have a way that you can you know pull them out back into real money. So if you're hosting a You vanished again. You actually vanished on the video as well for a short second. I think we can blame the uh, Florida internet. There we go. Sorry, the internet's misbehaving. Or Steam's trying to download a giant file or something. <laughs> um, hopefully, hopefully not. Um, but yeah, I think people people in general are appreciating it and and seeing the um, been seeing the gist as well. Um, yeah, I'm really hoping that the customers kind of see it as you know, a value add. It's not something we don't want to affect the game with these. Uh, it's something that'll be interesting for people, but not corrupt the experience, and you don't you don't ever have to buy anything. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so and this this general info screen with like more details and, and probably clickable links to like just in in information and legal stuff and everything else surrounding it is probably going to be updated when things are being implemented as well. But this will be you'll see this on the first. Um, when you first open the store for the, on, on you know, your first launch of 10.3, um, it'll pop up and, and in InfoSight, and then it'll probably pop up if we do any changes to it in general or things like that. So um, coming into the store, we have the latest iteration of it. So, you know, once again, bear in mind, things are, are work in progress and things are being updated and changed quite quite frequently in the last couple of days and weeks um might be some mm -hmm. further touches on it when we uh as we go along here um uh, so here's the store in general where you're interacting so this is where you are uh, browsing through buying selecting things um and just in general and then as you would normally have it you see your wallet with digital currency uh, this is at the moment tied directly to Steam, so the the acquisition and the interaction is happening through uh, the Steam API. So it's going off and take in mind all values are placeholder as well. So this is just stuff to be able to visually show things. Um, when you go through the motion of buying virtual currency as, as general expected, It'll pop up. We also have a fraud protection system in place. Um, anything you want to bring up with that? Or just it's a general pending uh, thing. It's recommended Steam best practices for accounts that are brand new. You, you, it's a good idea to just hold off 72 hours so that 
you don't get credit chargebacks and things like that. And so we do detect that. Uh, but most players won't encounter that if their Steam account is old, been around for a while, and it's made. You know, once you've made a purchase on Steam, you become a trusted account. So it's really just weeding out like Smurf accounts. And then you have that thing goes into your regular kind of Steam purchase order uh, cart thing, and then just like the regular cart checkout for uh, currency. It doesn't really show properly when I'm in the editor, but. So I see some questions in the chat about how are these skins going to work? Can you share them with other people? Uh, so the idea is that these are, yeah, these are all variants. So they're essentially skins but you still have to craft them. So if you have the Egyptian canoe uh, recipe, for example, then you're able to start a crafting project for that canoe, and you're able to specifically select, I want this special canoe for this. And then you create it and it just becomes its own item, which just happens to be identical to the canoe, uh, but you're not gonna be changing the items back and forth once they're created. And someone raised a good question, can you sell these in the store like so could someone make an egyptian canoe and sell it in their store and allow other players to use it uh so we actually have a server setting for that uh, which defaults to no uh just so that it's you don't necessarily get an economic advantage if you have this uh special canoe it's just for yourself uh but we do allow servers if they want to experiment with that and allow people to kind of input those into the economy they can so it'll be interesting to see how that kind of plays out what effect that has in the in the uh, the economy, but we are we are leaving that off to start. Uh, so the idea is that by default, it's just something that you build that you can use, and you can give it away to somebody if you want, but you can't like connect it to the ecosystem unless the server options selected. So in here we have um, we have a quantity limit for it as well, um, which is essentially you're buying the right to produce X amount of copies of this entity on a server to server basis. Yeah. The idea with this is that we couldn't allow unlimited creation of that because then one person could buy something and just give the entire, give it to the entire server. And it, it's basically like pirating a game or something. Uh, so, the, but we also didn't want to limit it to just one, like players might want to create more than more than one. So we have this quantity. That, and that will actually limit how many you can craft in a given world. <clears throat> so when you buy this recipe, you have it for every eco world, uh, but within each individual world, you're limited by the quantity. So I could build 10 shipwright signs in you know, White Tiger. I could build another 10 in Sea Otter, et cetera. So that's how we prevent it from being just spammed and given, given to everybody. Yeah, and we have we have a, a few things in, listed in here that are straight up and and this is as you mentioned previously um a very very big focus was to avoid kind of any any kind of relation to pay to win things so at the moment the recipes are tied up with you use you you'll always be targeted to having a vanilla version or a default stock version that will always be attributed towards that end so in case of you have the outdoor thing here. So this the friendly scarecrow, for example, it has a new um, default version, which is just a, a regular scarecrow. And then you use that regular scarecrow in the recipe to craft the fancy one or, you know, the, the specced up deluxe version of it. But they'll still do the same thing. They'll have the same points. They'll count as the same category for housing when it comes to furniture and so on. Um, so there's not going to be any deviation in value worth for the entity. Some cases, the, the, the pretty up version will be slightly more expensive because they might have additional costs to them to make them. Um, but overall, the goal is always going to be to have like a, a regular version anyone can craft that is in the same kind of category style theme as anything that we're adding to the store. And with that, maybe maybe we should show them the new crafting UI. Kind of go over some of the uh, quality of life changes things here. So, ooh, which one do we want to grab? Let's just grab the workbench. Have the canoe in there. So, to fit with this, um, 
we were running over our old crafting UI, and I wish I had a screen, a, a blank screenshot of the old one to just kind of overlay and show the differences. Um, and this is still being revised, tweaked, and kind of polished up so it looks as good as we want it to. Um, but one of the things that were really, really frustrating with the old one, and I think a lot of players will agree with me, is that when you wanted to do variations of types, and it was hard to find the button for it, it was difficult to set the quantity you were crafting, and it was it was like a puzzle game trying to do specific things if it wasn't just blanked out one type. So with the introduction of the IAP things, we're going to be having a whole bunch of new variants and, and, and different types of things. So we wanted to do a few things to increase quality of life on it. One thing that stands out, obviously, the layout is changed. Um, all the recipe ingredients are removed from the crafting item lists itself. So those are listed in just on the selection for it. Um, the variants also have a new column for when you're crafting things. So you can immediately right here, interact and click see changes in recipes um, without being obstructed by other elements. We also added a search bar, um, which is absolutely fantastic. I'm hoping it works now. Yeah, there's still a few like font changes and, and color things on the text that needs to be sorted out, but it's uh, quite neat, quite nice, and I'm hopefully uh, hopefully seeing pretty pretty substantial use for it. Um, another thing for the generalization and quality of light thing that we wanted to have in there, or at least I really wanted to, to be in there, um, is the addition of being able to create custom lists for categorization of things. So when you w say you have like five different items or 10 different items that you want to be having as switch quickly be able to find um, across servers or, you know, if you're doing carpentry, you might want to be having these things available through not having to search for them every time or not having to see half the recipes that you're never using. Um, you can create new custom lists. So say boards and blocks. Oh yeah, the still have a slight bug with enter not being confirmed. So now you have a boards and blocks list here. And in the all, you can just select, once you have toggleable custom searches, you can add these things to that specific list. So if we want to go through boards, and then we might want to be adding a hey, storage, and then we can just select that list and it'll only contain these things. And obviously you can just remove it and it'll disappear. And we also have a craftable here. So if I do this and give, whoa, 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 let's see, let's give mind blank completely. I do that, see if this works. There we go. It's it's not updating on on give commands, but it is when you're dragging dropping. So now it will ask, it will detect whatever you have in your personal inventory, and it will also show anything that is popping up in your linked inventories as well. So if we do this and let's give a stockpile, drop that in there, drop some logs in there. We link this up, and it'll still be it'll find those materials out of linked inventories as well. So now you can have a little bit of a, a quick check through in. Um, will the list be persistent from server to server or will you need to remake them every time you go to a new one? Uh, it should be saved under player preferences. So it should be contained on that local machine, but not be, it's not gonna transfer over in between system differences, but it will if you hop servers, but still on the same PC. Can you click the canoe? Let's see one that has a yeah has a premium variant. Yeah, so you see that one has a little icon on it. The, uh, the icon icon graphic is pending. 
just, just, just yeah. th this is just a placeholder um, as the art team is kind of sifting out what what we uh, what we want there. So that's kind of a way people discover there's these different skins available if they want to have like a special looking canoe or different objects like that. And then if you don't own it, it'll pop up with, hey, check it out in Marketplace. You pop it in there and it'll automatically route to the Marketplace with that selected for you. Very cool. So that is hopefully some, some upgrades to the crafting thing that um, that you'll uh, be dealing with that. Um, please, can the new account stuff end up syncing with those kind of settings, bindings, list preferences, and anything else? Uh, will be annoying for those players who move between machines or chair machines in specific. It's a reasonable request. Probably wouldn't be too hard to do. Store it in your account settings somewhere. It's like a... Steam Steam has some specific Steam preference settings, right? Probably, yeah. You put in Steam or just put in the SLG Strange Cloud. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely something that we can look into. It, it's a it's a sound thing mm -hmm. to uh, take a look at. It'd be nice to use cloud saves as well, but I don't think we can fit an eco world in a cloud save. No. No, that that'd be a little bit too hefty, I think. Uh, are the fractional ingredients cast visible when modules are inside workbenches? No, and it's been it's something that I've been kind of questionably looking at it, it maybe you have an idea on that John um, so when you have an upgrade module we so if we just grab one car, carpentry table your basic upgrade we do this just to, uh, just to kind of deal with that um, so when we have a module up and it reduces the cost of things um, you end up with that like fractional cost of ingredient input but we're mm -hmm. we're summarizing or we're, we're rounding up the value because we're not entirely like if you if you just make one but you have 0.75 cost it'll still consume a whole unit which is why we're representing it as a whole unit yeah we, maybe we could just show the decimals there and like inform people that it's it's kind of rounded up yeah maybe it's it's easier if like people will notice that hey 0.75 and then it eats one if you just make one yeah, so they can add a few to get that to more of a round number. Yeah. If they want. Actually, Pad Pad Padman's commenting on that, that new players are often overpricing stuff because of it, as they calculate based off what they see on the UI and not the actual cost for things. Interesting. Um, so that's our crafting UI change. Hopefully we can get some, some good feedback. Um, estimation for 10.3 release we have playtests kind of looming around the corner don't want to give an exact date for it yet but we are getting very close i think is is the best kind of statement you'll get for it um but it, it is it is getting closer it is definitely getting closer um we're at the moment um people who are working on the strange cloud things are digging through the account migrations to make sure that our old database is moved over to the new one so all the um, all the general information um and making sure that yeah. everyone can log in on staging once we do play test launch so we don't run into general problems with that um as well as bringing over all the all the old information with like icons and everything else that was tied yeah. to that like backer rewards and, and all the other details um so it's going to be a whole new set of databases for for that information and hopefully everything will run a heck of a lot better than it is currently um you know knock on wood um uh, as you should be doing in this case uh, uh doo -doo -doo. So that's the auth system we got the ip hopefully addressed most of the uh, potential like pay to win concerns people had um 
outdoor room furniture and new block sets. Maybe something to bring up since we're on the marketplace stream. Uh, let me grab grab a dev tool. Uh, do, 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 do. We can do let's do some. So as we're talking about the IP thing and and on the on the topic of pay to win. Uh, switch that over so the fill types work properly um, I was mentioning that we want to make sure that each each thing that you're adding and each thing that you're interacting with from a marketplace standpoint has an equivalent version um, of kind of interaction default wise so this is one of our new garden type blocks that doesn't really have a point value to it but just something that you can add uh, Add some things. We still have some 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 minor build glitches going on with uh, with the interactions. You might want to take a look at. Um, yeah, we got a PR coming. Yeah, we do that and then give garden pond as one of the. Uh, gonna have oh yeah, it's three by three. So, this is default stock vanilla enabled so everyone's going to be able to grab this and just craft it build it if they have the profession for it and then we also have some world objects that we're cooking up that is kind of matching in with the environment don't mind the material missing um toby has fixed that i just it's it's pending shader update so that'll be nice green cutesy setting um and this brings us into kind of the coziness improvements that we're looking for. Yeah, we got some other pretty exciting stuff coming for that too. Um, one big thing we're going to have in 10.3 is the same way that you can give reputation to paintings, you'll be able to give reputation to properties. Uh, so you can rate it and it'll start to generate culture. So this is like if someone makes a really cool piece of architecture, you can put this plaque object and people will be able to interact with it and rate the architecture, which will then generate culture. Uh, and for settlements, that culture will, you know, be treated as normal and increases the total value, increases the influence. Uh, but you can also get culture bonuses on your residence too. So if you make a really cool house and people are rating it highly, uh, you'll actually get some uh, housing value boost. It'll apply a multiplier there based on the the culture value that you generate. Yeah, I was I was hoping to have that done prior to the stream, but we didn't really have a, a good placeholder object to kind of shove that component in. But yeah, it'll be. Uh... Oh, and also outdoor objects are going to start generating housing points too. Yeah, and that that was bringing me into what I was going to do here. Let's grab, give homestead claim stake. So, as we uh, as we really wanted to, looking at the IP things and and just like decor in general, um, one of the things that we uh, we have been wanting for a while, I think, at least me, I think you've been on the verge as well, quite a few times, is we have general housing and progression benefits from cramping furniture indoors and building you know rooms and houses and, and kind of upgrading with different furniture escalating for giving you higher experience gain back and forth but it was all indoors and it was all things that you generally just hid away and we wanted to increase a general ambience feeling outdoor and kind of add value and give rewards for people that did kind of beautify their area which is bringing which brings us into that whole be able to rate people's homes basically uh, which adds another benefit to it uh, but also straight out straight out from from the housing mechanics system um, directly give you rewards for adding things and one of the clear-cut um, things we wanted to do there is just uh, we already have some of the things, some of the assets that was related to being placed outdoors, like really big fountains or street lights and, and outdoor decor in general, but it wasn't really utilized in the way we wanted it to. So having some new garden blocks and some new visual background stuff that you can build um, 
but we also straight out improved and made a system to deal with outdoor as a housing room. Uh, so if we could do, what do we want to do? Granite, uh, what was that thing called? Yeah, let's grab the terrace fountain. So one of the new default stock items in here. Uh, and it's probably not do 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 do. Oh yeah, it, it's got it's got general outdoor penalty because outdoor is currently tied to the rest of the, the house value itself, similar to how bathroom works. Uh, but here you can see that outdoor is actually a new room that acts in uniform with the rest of the house. So if you build if you build up your house and you add a garden, you add a bunch of things in your garden related to outdoor values, which we can go in here and go housing and we have the outdoor thing here so these are all the things that have been moved from being like generic decorative things to being specifically giving points towards an outdoor value and things like the buntings the banners we've got new uh, window planters and some other stuff the braziers and, and kind of the, the big open flame lighting has been moved out uh, we got the garden pond that i placed down we also have the premium version of it which it should be showing here but koi pond which it's a bit sad because it's got non non proper material fish in it they look really nice in with the new shader updates radioactive uh, fish yeah right now it's 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 purple radioactive fish um but those gives you th those are giving you direct or did unity just freak out now there we go um so they give you direct outdoor value um and furnishing value for placing stuff outdoors so that's another kind of point of bonus amplification that just making things pretty interacting with your outdoor environment not just in your house gives you a value as well um and that's kind of yeah. building into that one of the big, yeah go one of the big kind of design directions that I've always liked for eco is that we want to tie together the fact that making something look cool benefits you in the game. So that was one part that I always thought was missing is you can make your outdoor area look really awesome, but it didn't tie into your housing value at all. Uh, and similarly, uh, the architecture and the style that you do wasn't really tying into the housing value, but now we have this ability to rate the architecture, which will tie directly into the housing value. So it's really, you know, as we're adding to eco, we're kind of connecting these things together so that the creativity that players are doing in the game is reflecting in actual uh, gameplay uh, advancements too. And then we have some of the things that we have in mind for, uh, for later on with Animal Husbandry. Um, they're making an appearance um, at the moment but uh, we are going to want to tie some actual functionality into the scarecrows as well. So you have the, the, the default kind of stock version, which is the scarecrow, and then you have a little bit touched up, um, happier scarecrow. So he's trying to give you a big hug here. Um, so yeah, there's there's a lot of a lot of new assets coming with this. There's a lot of new cool decor stuff. Uh, and while on the subject of decor, as painting has always been a pretty pretty big topic since we brought it up, um, we're continually to experiment with some new uh, to paint. Ooh, what is that thing called? Give the paint tool? Yeah. Um, and I, I don't know. Have you seen this yet, John? So we were me and me and Mike were cooking around with the new painting upgrades. So we're dealing with one of the things that we came up as an as an issue that my, I was going back and forth with Toby about was general color density. And like the the general layer opacity of the color itself so if you had depending on the material you were running into problems where some colors were having a really big impact 
versus other colors of the blocks that would completely kind of cast out the detailing of the block um, and it was causing like basically you turning an object black versus turning it tinted black had such a profound difference with the shader settings that we were experimenting with so and with that experimentation came out um, coding setting so we're looking at so instead of just having a default stock as we're dealing with the, the just the dev paint thing here um, you would in with the regular tool you craft the paint using the paint mixing table and then you drag it into the paint gun that you're using uh, but with the dev paint tool it works similar to the dev block builder but if we're painting instead uh, but on the paint tools now you have a coding selection so you can select the opacity of the paint you're painting which gives you a much much higher degree of interaction even with the same paint that you're using to kind of view it as different layers of thickness to it uh, while still wanting to maintain kind of the same shade that you were after that's great yeah, and, i hadn't seen that yet and, and that's kind of sprung just from the general experimentations we were doing to kind of getting the colors shaders and everything to be tweaked correctly we realized that hey this is just a super super simple addition that we can just throw in and gives players that direct element control where they might just want a, a smidget of the color or they want it really really thick but still see the kind of have the background material gleam through um you will see some mona lisa's getting painted with this thing pretty quickly <laughs> yeah there, there's there's a lot of a lot of potential and a lot of voice people can be using it and uh really looking forward to uh to seeing that so hopefully hopefully people appreciate those changes you can also run paint mixing um, the changes and more of the finalized ui for it so we had a mixing station there's i think we still have one more pass that mike was looking for ui wise to do like a reset save reset button switcheroo so this is not entirely final so when you're mixing a paint you can interact with it um, and you can see the preview for it and then you also see the quantity of base paint that's required to make it and it'll fetch stuff out of your linked inventory and out of its internal or its internal inventory i believe we settled for um, and then you can just change the color gradient for it you can save it as different shades so this is also one of the things that we're saving in player preference as well um, so you are retaining this over different servers um, and it, you can clear it and kind of do whichever and once you have a mix you're happy with and you want to make a whole buttload of buckets you can just ramp up and it'll scale the cost and it'll go up to 500 i think in one batch um and then you just have it in your inventory or have it in in the object inventory and off you go thing i like about this is that the paint is represented by items uh so you can you can imagine paint stores that have just like a bunch of different colors for sale you know or color palettes that people have kind of uh customized and put out there so you'll have some pretty interesting little connections to the economy there too yeah so that's another kind of element added to that whole coziness and making sure people can make their own kind of touches on buildings and, and get things going, even just expanding the creativity level. Um, and as mm -hmm. as per you do have like from from a server setup perspective or if you want to do like just play creatively and just do massive artworks because you like the paint interaction or whatnot, you have the dev paint tool that just doesn't consume paint when you're dealing with it and can kind of play around. Um, yeah. P 
pretty happy with that. So the only thing that we have kind of left on the agenda for this stream was was some of the preview stuff, but I have not I have actually not toggled that on and tested it properly yet. And I also haven't gotten to I was gonna do this this week, but then I was pretty pretty bad last week, so things kinda got pushed. Um off grid placement. Um or you know, yes. off off tile placement is a crazy new endeavor that we're diving into. Um uh, not sure what I need to do. I think is it gonna be called uh, live or do I need to restart? I made, a, I made a change today that's not in staging yet, so uh, I'll have to demo that next time. Yeah, so that'll that'll get its own proper stream, but it's not yeah. entirely done for ten point three, so it's it's kind of earmarked to ship and go live on 10.4 but we do have plans for like an early access preview package of it so you can toggle mm. it on to test it out and see how how and what and, and how again um, as noticed so inside uh, the gameplay category under features or in the feature config file if you don't have access to the GUI you have that placement on surface boolean and it is set for false for default for 10.3. It will it it will be flipped on for 10.4, um, and it allows you to have free reign placement on objects. So things like rugs, too. So you can lay down like a big rug, and then you can arrange your furniture at any rotation you want, any position you want. So you can just get a lot more creative with how you lay out your uh, your houses and your items. Also tabletops, you can put all kinds of interesting items on tabletops, including food. So you'll be able to see the food out there. Uh, and you can also set up stores. So you can put items out on a table and mark each of them for sale. So now you have a store where all the items, they're not in chests, they're actually on this table. So it'll be some uh, pretty cool looking uh, new stores will come out of this too, I think. Yeah. So one of the, one of the big conundrums we had or, or you know we're still kind of having is what do we deal with a lot of the general decor that we have in some of the objects um and kind of how far do we want to take placement allowability because it's also a matter of kind of showcasing and, and, and instructing the player in they can do this here but why can't they do it over here so leaning mm -hmm. towards if we wanted to just kind of rip out some of the assets and make like book books and more knickknacks decor wise surrounding it or if we just want to have kind of some things where you can't place it and some places where you can't so say up the bookshelf might have one empty shelf that you can place stuff on but not on the other three um if you have thoughts opinions and questions surrounding it and just want to give feedback surrounding ideas of that pop in a moment we're on discord you also have the address for the canny uh feedback section please pop in there and drop whatever feedback you might have it's easier for us to track it over there uh, that way it doesn't get lost in kind of the myriad of other uh, of other channel feedbacks we get um yeah a lot of the people in this you know, watching our streams, we'll probably be turning on this preview feature. So it'll be great to get feedback on it uh, prior to its full release. Uh, we kind of, we wanted to improve a lot of the world objects too. Like right now the tables are up to a, they're a meter high just because we had a limitation with putting stuff on, it only be placed on grid. But with this change, we won't have to do that. So we're going to shrink them down to be a little more realistic size. So it'll just kind of make things look nicer and more appropriate uh, size based as well. So that'll be part of the 10.4 uh, release for that feature. Yeah. Um, Padman has a, a marketplace question on will community hosted servers be able to add server specific slash unique items to the marketplace store or even modders adding their kind of content there? Eventually, yes, that is the goal. Uh, for this first release, it'll just be our store where we make cosmetics, but I absolutely want to get UGC in there, get people able to create stuff. Uh, try some interesting business models too, like you could make a mod, and then any server that uses that mod 
you, the modder will get a percent of uh, eco credits being spent in that world. So then there's a you know a nice incentive for modders to create cool stuff that could get used widely. So yeah, lots we want to do with that. This is really just the beginning of that. And yeah, a bit of every purchase goes to charity. Um, people should check that out. The Ocean Cleanup is this really cool charity that's basically removing massive amounts of trash from the oceans. Yeah, they they are they are they are kind of among among my favorite content in general. They're doing some pretty pretty nifty things, and the the big important part for us looking at it was trying to find a good charity that deals with improving technology to help with that cleanup or, or help mitigate general damage cost um, rather than kind of restricting limiting and, and just removing things from people's lives we'd rather opt to focus on helping people instead and helping you generally improving the environment um, with that <laughs> <laughs> is, exactly. is is any of the percentage credit profit going towards the game master teams? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's not a bad idea. We should throw them a tip. But yeah, in terms of the charity that we're choosing, we it's exactly as you said. We want something that's kind of matches the eco vibe, which is you know you're you're still progressing as a society you're still building and creating but you're doing it in a way that is mindful of your environment you're not trying to just stop creation entirely you're you're using technology and advancement to improve it so i thought that this one matched up pretty well someone's really going to uh, answer my door uh, alpenglow um you won't be able to access the store in so question being don't know what happens if you buy things when you're not on a server or not in a settlement um the settlement thing is still kind of being revised and, and looked at because it's going to be pretty hard to get in a safe functionality wise um but as for general purchases when it comes to the server registration and everything else um, you can't access the store if you're not on a server so you cannot make that purchase unless you have that world reference. Yep. Yeah. So you gotta you make your purchases inside of a world. Uh, we do have something that we wanted to avoid people creating their own server or their friend creates a server and then they purchase stuff in there just to get that you know fifteen or twenty percent back to them. We'd rather have it go to actual server hosts. So it does need to be a public server that has. You know some people that have played for a, a little bit of time yeah um pondo purchases server bound or account bound they're account bound per server so if you have 500 i you know 500 blocks you can craft you can craft those 500 blocks on each server you visit um uh, unrestricted in that manner uh mishka on with servers, modders, etc., receiving a cut of purchases, are those coins only going to be spendable for further eco coin items, or are they convertible back to Steam credit, IRL money? Um, running a server and getting 500 coins due to players purchasing things, does this mean I just have continuous free fancy scarecrow supply, or can I convert those coins into RL money to, uh, to somehow pay for server upkeeps and so on? Did I lose John here for a second? Uh, I think he had <laughs> he had he had the door doorbell ringing. Um, but yeah, the answer is is that's the general goal. Um, and we were also looking into um, contributing and attributing that to uh, like direct server fee costs and so on depending on services you use. Um, so there are a few a few kind of networked paths that we're investigating how it would be done overall, um, as well as over what time period we're talking about. So it doesn't it might not happen once a month, it might be quarterly, um, 
I think that was the information that was on on the general info screen. Um, the charity distribution? No, the, the, the just in the, the distribution in general. So if we attributing to server owners as well as uh, modders, how those would be received and at the ability to convert them into somehow managing to pay like server upkeep and so on. Yeah, we'll have a way that you can directly spend eco credits for hosting. Um, we won't have a way to extract them into actual money, at least for a while. <clears throat> but that is a longer term thing we want to look at. Uh, but basically now you'll be able to spend it on a few things like uh, the eco marketplace that we showed you. Uh, you'll be able to spend it on hosting. And I want to also allow it to buy uh, copies of the game. So you can buy friends who don't play the game copies of it if you made a bunch of uh, eco credits through mods or hosting. So yeah, be a nice foundation for future stuff. Yeah. yeah. I think, is there any, any general question that... Uh... Uh, something not clear. Can you please explain again how to avoid fake servers created only to get shares from Marketplace? Yeah, so we detect if a server is public and if it's had players on it. Um, right now, if you've had four players who played more than five hours each or you have ten players who played more than two hours each, then you become eligible uh, for the tax. I and mean, we're still kind of working out those numbers. But basically, if you have an active public server, then you're eligible for that kind of 20% cut of every, everything that's purchased inside of that world. Uh, how, how does it get split in between mods? Like, how would the server know which mods are installed and which would get, which would get which cut? But I think that would be related to... It's a bit hard depending on the mod, the, the type of mod. Like, if it's an interaction mod versus here's a new object kind of thing. So there's there's a lot of kind of pitfalls that we're looking into and investigating to make sure that you know, we don't fall into everyone. Um, yeah, that's going to be uh, something we still got to figure out specifics for. Uh, but general idea is that we have, we have some path that modders can get cuts of this ego credits. Uh, do we have any... Do, 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 do. I think that covers most of it. Got a, a quite a few, quite a few good questions, and I think we answered most of it. And as always, you know, if you have further questions, don't hesitate. Pop in over on the Discord, and um, we got the Dev Hangout where I usually make a daily appearance in some capacity. Um, also, get a hold of some of our other developers running into things and or QA team when, when we run into issues. Um, yeah. It's been great having you here again. Um, yeah, it's fun. We should do these more often. Yeah, you're, you're definitely most welcome. Um, great to hear people speak too. And I'm glad that people are, you know, recognizing that this is something i was a little nervous about anytime you add in app purchases to a game people can get upset about it but at least people on the stream seem to be very you know, recognize that this is going to add a lot of value to eco it's going to add a lot of long-term support for us and just open up supporting the game in a much broader capacity uh so i think it should be great for everybody yeah and i, I think just 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 the important kind of transparency of we're, we're, when we're doing this we're also trying to deal with just avoiding the whole notion of just because you pull in a bunch of money on on something you get immediately successful at it kind of you know evading that with making sure that you still need the original items to craft the things um so they might they're never gonna be cheaper they're never gonna be better um like mm -hmm. I mentioned early on, a lot of the times they might be more expensive because they might have an additional thing. Um, each new array of IP things we're aiming to have, make sure that we have a base variant that it is coming off on. So we're never just going to drop out and just do like 40 new IP items and not a single one that just like non-paying 
uh, players don't have access to um, so making sure that we can uh, tiptoe that balance between building up the base game versus just adding like premium content that not everyone can take a part of um, and I think just having that having that balance firmly affixed in what players can expect out of it um, it's just going to be very uh, very helpful going forward with it yeah definitely be a new era it will it, it definitely will um, but yeah thank you so much for coming and uh, everyone else I will catch you on the next stream hopefully we'll have the bit more to show off with the uh, with the off grid thing that for testing we also have um, we also have a new attachments for the steam tractor that we can show off then I'm hoping um, and some other cool stuff um, some more outdoor furniture and whatnot um, yeah have a great weekend everyone and uh, catch you on the next one take care great chatting